All right, we're rolling. Test, test, test. Test, test. I'm good. Test. You good? Test. You're good? Test in French. Test in French. All right, guys, we're back. Hi, buddy. By the way, two-hour podcast in French yesterday. How was, I was it? so tired. Mind melting. <laughs> I was so tired. I'm getting way better. Yeah. I'm speaking in French. Like I need, I need to do that more often because I'm, I'm starting to get. Uh, it's coming a lot more naturally. It's not like as uh, industrious. Yeah. As it was at the beginning. So I'm starting to get a groove a bit. I can't even imagine the, with the scope of the things that you talk about trying to frame things with similar context or make sure you, right. you know, the way words work is this word kind of means eight other words kind of collectively. Yeah. And that fits best in this place kind of. And once you switch language, those right. relationships change. And that assumes I know the world in French. Yeah. Because I remember like I spent more years outside of France than in France. And you've done most of your neuroscience reading in English far removed well, from your French Well, anything relating to the nervous system yeah. actually strength and conditioning. Anything strength and conditioning on is in English for me. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, because I was in the US for most of it. Jesus. Yeah. So like suddenly I'm like, you know, the, the weird moment where you go, I hope that's a French word. Yeah. And I'm looking at the guy's <laughs> face to see if it is or not. And once in a while I was like, I guess it wasn't. <laughs> that was literally, but no, I, I, that was a good podcast. I, I think I did pretty good because yeah. I'm starting to get more animated too because like, I don't have to look for words. I, it is the most exhausting thing is to look for words. Speaking carefully sucks. Ah, oh, like, when you have to, uh, you know, like every, you're like this every two seconds, like checking what you're saying is like, how do I say that? Yeah. Like, you know, having to rehearse something before you say it, basically. Yeah. <gasps> oh my God. Like do that on a podcast and while trying to remain, you know, like it's a podcast. So yeah. you have, you know I mean, uh, charisma goes a long way. So you're trying to still keep it interesting. And oh, that was rough. <laughs> but yesterday too, uh, it was funny because I had to go internal talk, external talk and all that stuff, going back to the squad, the press. And now, whenever you get me in that conversation, I want to add a million stuff. So it was yeah, kind of... Where do I take this whole thing? Where do I take it? So I thought I found a very interesting, uh, a good way of going at it. I went, okay, let me ask some questions, right? Some logical points mm -hmm. that I had about external talk versus internal talk. I was like, and then that seemed to work really well. I think everybody related to it. It's like, yeah, when you say like, it sounds very logical. I was like, yeah, I know. But why can't then just prove me wrong then so I can learn? Yeah. Just there's, there's a logical point about external talk and everything. It's like, does it really make sense that? Yeah. And then I'm just, let me ask a question. Same thing with nutrition. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but am I not right with the circadian rhythms? Yes. All right. So. Yeah. Well, like, like anything we talk about where there's got to be a line where the value matters. It's like, okay, with circadian rhythms, am I right that they're important? Yes. Okay. So what things, How do they what things yeah. should we put? Maybe what should we shift around to emphasize that better? Start with that conversation. Right, exactly. So it's, every time I do that, yeah. and then it's hard not to go toward the strong fit protocol, nutrition protocol. They go, oh, yeah, but Pauline Quinn says steak in the morning. I'm like, all right, is red meat requiring a high level of digestion? Yes, yeah. I think, right. Yeah. So does that mean therefore that I need to be toward a higher level of parasympathetic? Yeah. Right. Does that fit second rhythm during the day? No. Okay, so that, that should be a problem, yeah. therefore. Yeah. And that once you start to, I think, put it like that, people go, oh, I see what you're saying. So now if I'm wrong, go ahead, yeah. prove me wrong. But well, I, I just I don't think, understand I think with some I... of those things too, because a lot of the areas are new, as far as like being really applied and measured in the area right. of nutrition, is it seems like maybe there's just, there's not a lot of, I don't want to point, say just data, like show me the data, show me the yeah. studies on the sides of things. But there isn't a lot of markers where we know what the impact is of, right. of like, okay, what if you eat completely out of alignment with your circadian rhythms? What are we measuring? How do we know? Well, I don't see that study. Actually, on circadian, there is. But um, the only thing you have on circadian is correlation between, for example, mental illness mm -hmm. and circadian rhythm. Like, for example, you, you have people of schizophrenia with yeah. schizophrenia, right? you mess up the circadian rhythms and you see symptoms skyrocketing. Yeah. And so we have a number of stuff like the impact of light mm -hmm. on a number of things. That we can measure. So it's always the same. So the, the problem with all this is always the same. Is I can't give you a, a study that says eating steak for breakfast will worsen the symptoms of schizophrenia. Yeah. 
I can't. Yeah. I don't have a study for that one, but I have a study sh showing you that when you disturb the circadian rhythm, this happens, and then that having steak in the morning logically would disturb yeah. the, the the circadian rhythms. Do I have that study? No, I don't because we haven't made it. But it's sh the logical evidence points me in that direction yeah. and everything. And this is where I think people fail, and then they go, well, then you don't have the empirical data. And I'm like, but you don't understand how science works. That is not what the The concept of science is concept of science is first you have an hypothesis. Yeah. It's a Bayesian inference model, right? Yeah. First you have an hypothesis, then you then you hit against observation. But if you have only empirical data, all you have is an hypothesis. Weirdly, mm -hmm. so I remember like uh, Brett Weinstein talked about. Well, yeah, this. that was it was it was interesting. He discussed that the scientific method, as it actually is at its foundation, mm -hmm. is I have a th hypothesis. Empirical data only exists for the sake of disproving it. That's it. That's it. Because you only, make a prediction. I make a prediction, and then we see what happens. It's there. It either right. it doesn't prove it, or it, my hypothesis just kind of still sits there, undisproved. Undisproved. So yeah. I got one step further to our believing that maybe I'm yeah. right. That truthfully, you'll almost never know anything for certain. That that is the point. That, 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 it's that, a Bayesian yeah. inference. It's always so, percentage. And so the way that I'm trying to think of the way uh, the capacity with which he was using that. No, because discussion, it, but oh, it was very interesting. He talked about he, yeah. he was like he was like if aliens from outer space yes. came and landed here and had all this system. far more advanced yeah. science, he said, as far as we could tell, that at a fundamental level, that most likely still at the basis mm -hmm. of their scientific experience is experience is going to be that same thing. You know why? Because the Bayesian inference model yeah. and the Bayesian inference seems to be the base of life, as demonstrated it's by this, Schrodinger and Carl yeah. Freestone and everything. So it's not a You know, in an interesting way, it's not a science. Science is not a principle. It's life. That's a principle. Yeah. Life works as a Bayesian inference. Yeah. So science just mimics life. But what they were talking about was very interesting. We talked about this on a podcast before. Maybe. Or at least I talked to you about it. Yeah. It's a problem like physics have now with uh, AIs. Not truly AIs, but they have algorithms that are very, very powerful now that can draw patterns mm -hmm. out of stuff. So the problem they have in physics <coughs> right now is they take those algorithms, they get a pattern, and they publish the pattern as a study. Yeah. Well, it's data-driven science is what it's right. called. It's data-driven science. The problem is that, first of all, science is always data-driven, so that doesn't, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean shit. When they say data-driven, they really literally means that an algorithm found a pattern. The problem with that is that pattern is an hypothesis yeah. because the algorithm based the pattern on specific things that and, were included. Yeah, in. and there's very it's wildly incomplete information compared to what is right the whole. because it did not integrate yeah. because it's not a true AI. Yeah. It's just an algorithm. So you you can find patterns in almost anything. So that's what the algorithms do. Yeah. So when you have that, that gives you an hypothesis, and from there you would have to start doing testing in order to. And, I, and, I think and that's also, the problem with physics right now. Well, I think it's important to understand, too, that at the root of that hypothesis that comes from just this pile of data, because you see it all the time. I, I can see it. It's, it's actually really e easy to lean on that type of information to prove When yourself you right, else. because I can just find anything. You can just find, if I wanted to find statistics relating uh, just correlation, which is all this shit is, yep. is obesity to this to that, and I can just draw the lines and say, see, that's a theory. But that is a theory. And just because it's an hypothesis, just because it's not a, even theory yet, it's, a, an it's a hypothesis. Well, yeah, and just because, any, well, theory of mind, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, the common world, but just yeah, because yeah, yeah. somebody had a wider swath of data, which I hate to break it to you, data is the biggest thing in the world right now. We're piling more and more mm -hmm. of it. So all of these harvesting those things for trends is like the nature of what is going on in information right now. Right. And it's fucking not. Is it's not. It's it's, incomplete. it's useful. It is, but it just doesn't give you no, certainty. But so all it gives you is an hypothesis. Yeah, a That's the part. That, that, yeah. yeah that, but again, a prediction to make. Yeah. Which is what an hypothesis is. Is let's make a prediction. So it gave you step one. Yeah. So what I find interesting is they say, well, you don't have the empirical data, and I'm like, but neither do you. Yeah. That data that you have is not an empirical data. No. It is just a pattern to start, it, to have an hypothesis to start the process. Yeah. So. Uh, this is this is because computers. Yeah. That this this is actually a, um, a danger danger science is facing right now is the power of computers mm -hmm. because now we we're starting to to have that issue between hypothesis versus true science in the Bayesian uh, inference model and so 
we're starting to phase that. But in the case of what we do, we first we start with the hypothesis and then we test on all people and stuff like that. So, so our way, or is the true scientific way. Yeah. Whereas most of them out there are just stopping an hypothesis. That's what they're not understanding. Yeah. I would love to have that conversation with uh, OPEX back, mm -hmm. that, that podcast, because what they were attacking me on was the scientific system model like yeah. way of doing science and i did because i was there to apologize for a misunderstanding which i should not have apologized for i did not take them on on the system on how to do science if i could redo it now i would destroy them going yeah. like you want to go at science okay yeah. like what you're doing all empirical data is only forming an hypothesis you're not going anywhere at least us we are testing our hypothesis. Yeah. At least I'm making predictions. Yeah. They're just, not even going there. Yeah, if you're just pulling data and all you're actually doing is harvesting hypotheses. And, yeah, that's it. And, and you're not... So, but from there, you have to make a prediction. Yeah. And that prediction has to come true through empirical data to prove anything or to not be disproven yeah. in that case. Yeah, because you'll never prove Everything anything. just exists until it has been disproven as far as that goes. And Every it will never will be... Yeah, and so it will never be proven. Yeah. Nothing will ever be proven. It only can be disproven at some point Yeah. because it's a percentage base. It's a basic inference model. Anyway, so I wanted to talk Came about this. Came in hard on this one. Yeah. No, because it's important <laughs> no, it's because the scientific uh, model, right, I think is widely misunderstood. Yeah. People love to see empirical data where they have no understanding of what it means. Yeah. So well, I, get, yeah. I was on a podcast once where I was supposed to eat 150 chicken McNuggets for the episode. So this is this is oh, on the scale of like... That's thing, a lot. Yeah. Well, but actually we, then we didn't, so we, I was supposed to do it for the 200th episode, but yeah. I chose not to. Yeah, there you go. Because that was going to be 200 McNuggets. And I and McNuggets are more expensive in Europe. <laughs> right. Oh yeah, that 200. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I'm probably better call it. Yeah, still wouldn't trust it. Yeah, anyway. Um, right. So one of the things we're going to get into today, the kind of the subject of today's thing, you sent me this a little yeah. while back. And it's, it's like the perfect uh, subject for what's going for on. Right now, yeah, I guess too. so, yeah. <clears throat> is on boredom, which at a surface level, the first time I heard it, I, was, I didn't know where you were going. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, boredom always seems right. to sit on the opposite side of like, I really don't know what, just kind of being entertained is all mm -hmm. that really sat to me. I never yeah. thought about what it meant, lack what it stimulus, could have been right? for. What's that? Most, to most people, it's lack of stimulus. Yeah, yeah, usually. And, or... or the truth is, I think for most people, they've never thought about it. I, I don't know. I, which well, This is interesting. So I live most of my life in some state of just bored, not engaged with what's going on or what's going on. I'm, I'm, I am bored. Yeah. Or just feverish, go, 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 go. Until, but the thing is, that only goes until it's a hard whatever that is, and I check out and detach from that, yeah. and then it's back to... Well, you know, yeah. it's it's very interesting. And when I started looking into this with what boredom really is, um, like the fact that I hadn't looked into that <laughs> for thirty fucking yeah. six years is crazy to me. Yeah, it's crazy. To um, me. I would I would say that uh, most people hate being bored. Yeah, it is not a good feel feeling. Yeah, on the emotional balance, it goes uh, on the neg negative side, right? Yeah. So. And yeah, it's been really studied for the less than 20 years. The, the advance in um, the neuroscience part of all that stuff in the last 10 years is crazy. Like, it's, it's really 10 years. I'm still, I think it's the free energy principle that started mm -hmm. all that shit, really. Yeah. Like the interoception. I think Carl Friston that changed a lot of that stuff. But anyway, yeah, the, the boredom. Is it important to know what it is and uh, what it is and all that stuff? Yeah. I think it's a very interesting subject. So we're going to go into what it is based on the, on the research today. And I'm going to explain what I read into this, what I think it means, and, uh, and the rabbit hole goes deep, yeah. as usual. So, so I'll I'll let let you start. I'm yeah. going to start with the uh, this study. It's on the Strong Fit Library. Yep, it is. And I don't remember what it's the called title called boredom. Is. It's sitting in Julian's chalkboard at the moment. It is called, let me pull it up here. This is the one, Boredom Sustained. Attention and the Default Mode Network. You nailed it. Yeah. And, yeah, that's, uh, that's, so, a good, that's a good study. I mean, it's a good, it's not, it's not a study, it's a paper. Yes, yes. So here's how they kind of, their explanation of, of boredom. One consistent finding in the boredom literature links the experience with a specific kind of self-regulatory failure, lapses in attention, and mind wandering. Uh, this work supports the notion that boredom is associated with a failure to engage attention on the task at hand, 
With respect to mind wandering in particular, research suggests that it is not a unitary construct or with two distinct types identified. Spontaneous versus deliberate mind wandering. And so that's a that's a piece that does matter. Oh, so much. Extremely so matter. Much. So we'll get into that one as we go. Spontaneous it's versus the, deliberate. Actually, that's by the way, that's a podcast in itself. Like mind wandering, we are not defining it correctly because there is a spontaneous mind which is just thoughts coming at you disturbing yeah. thought patterns where you're doing something you go why am i thinking about laundry yeah and mind wandering going like let, let i'm just gonna in a creative way mm -hmm. i'm gonna let my mind go and figure out the shit on its own yeah. like einstein was saying a lot of stuff he figured out was walking around the yeah. block at night and everything there's that kind of mind wandering where you're actually gathering information mm -hmm. and finding patterns and then there is the spontaneous one where you're just being attacked by a laundry day yeah and then we've got, in large undergraduate samples tested in our laboratory, we find that it is spontaneous as opposed to deliberate mind wandering, wandering that is most right. associated with boredom. Yeah. So the spontaneous type is the one that's triggered there. Uh, regular mind wandering is, a, is kind right. of a different thing. Um, other work has shown that mind wandering, such as boredom, is associated with negative effect. Yes. When considering the neural underpinnings of these constructs, both mm -hmm. spontaneous, task-unrelated mind-wandering and lapses in attention on behavioral tasks have been shown to be related to activity in a set of interconnected brain regions known as the default mode network. Yep. End. But anti-correlated with the interior insula, and that's going to be everything. Yeah, so let's unpack that here a little bit. So, yeah, yeah. so what they're saying... So let me translate. What they're saying is boredom is your incapacity to connect with your environment. Yeah. You are disconnecting with your environment. Uh, I think we can uh, all agree with that. But so that also means that they are, di um, from the paper, that there are different types of boredom. You have boredom where you have a lack of stimulus, right? Where you're like, Ugh, what am I going to do? But that's not true to all feeling of boredom, right? You also have the boredom. Let's say... I'm playing a comp uh, PlayStation game, mm -hmm. right? And uh, nothing happens. So I'm like, Ugh, this is boring. Yeah. But what if I keep losing against a boss? I can't, I can't uh, win against. Mm -hmm. That's boredom as well. Like this yeah. is just, yeah. Uh, yeah, like I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. So it's not true that it's always under stimulus. Over stimulus can no, also because it's lead the same to amount boredom. of stimulus. Tech, I mean, all things considered, right? In those right. Two but you, for example, you have boredom when you feel understimulated, but boredom that can comes also from being overstimulated. Yeah. We saw that on the neural activity. We saw that on the on, through interoception when you had a type of boredom that where there was less stimulus within the body and some boredom where there was more. Yeah. stimulus from inside the body. So it is not a lack of stimulus necessarily. There seems to be different types of boredom. They classified it in five different yeah. types. You have apathy on one side, but you have overstimulation on the other. Yeah. If, like, for example, again, like you keep losing against a boss, you're bored of your, of your mind, but in a frustrated way. Right? Mm -hmm. Or like, like you're, at the, you're at the bank and the teller... Well, just there's, a, there's no getting back into it. That you, you just... Right. No, you're uh, disconnecting uh, uh, from... Yeah. But there's two ways of disconnecting from your environment then. The fact that you just don't want to be there in both cases, but you can not want to be there because there's nothing there to gain, or because you have too much stimulus, like for example, frustration. Yeah. You're at the bank and the teller doesn't know his job. And you're starting to lose your mind. You're like, I need to get out of here. You're bored out of your mind, but from an overstimulus, from yeah. almost from anger. Yeah. Right. So it's not that simple then. Then boredom is not just that thing because... It's okay. not because you don't have anything to do. It's not just no. that. There is that, that apathy, yeah. but it's not just that. That means that the true effect of boredom, the true reason, cause effect of, uh, causation of boredom is you disengaging from your environment. Yeah. That's what boredom is. So is that a pathology then? Well, where, what controls that mechanism? Because you say right. it, it's, it's you disengaging with your environment. It, right. it, it's, it's... And that's where it gets extremely interesting. Yeah. So when they talk about self-regulatory, what they're saying is that uh, you are incapable of switching network to pay attention to the task at hand. That's what disconnecting from your environment is, is you cannot pay attention to the task at hand. Right. And this is where it becomes extremely interesting. And so what they did, the, the, all the neural testing and all that stuff, what they saw is that boredom is associated with the default mode network minus the interior insula. That's going to come in because that's very important. So that uh, we know that in the default mode network is the mind wandering. Mm -hmm. Right. But all types of mind wandering, spontaneous and deliberate. 
So I was like, all right, so which one is, is which and how does that work and everything? And this is where the rabbit hole starts. So do you want first to establish certain things or I can start going at that? We, can we establish the selection mechanism, I guess, right. uh, of of our attention? Whether it's, you know what I mean? Right. Like yeah, yeah. what? Right. Is that a choice? Is that autom automated? Right. So it... the, at the attention seeking is what? Is... Um, when you, when you start the attention-seeking mechanism, what do you try? You're trying to get meaningful information from what you're doing. Meaningful being the key word. Not mm -hmm. just information, but meaningful information. So it's basically you're trying to draw pattern from the stuff in front of you. When you do a boring game or email, there's no pattern because there's no meaningful information you're gaining from the stuff. Like you know already all this. Worst thing you could do is read a paper you already read six times. Not yeah. a, a fiction where you can always gain something new. But like a very boring paper, a list of additions, you're like, yeah, I know it. So there is nothing meaningful to get from that. Yeah. Right. Drawing patterns, drawing meaningful information for something is a specific brain network called the salience network. Okay. Right. Salience network quiz. Where is one of the main hub of the salience network? Is that the red interior insula? Bingo. Got it. Interior insula. Right. What did they say about boredom? That the default mode network minus the interior insula. Mm -hmm. So if you remember, we have default mode network here, yeah. which is, and then we have the executive and the salience is in the, in the middle. Salience is a bit of both, right? Okay. You activate both. So you have some part of the default mode network, but you also have some of the interior insula. So if I take the, inter, the default mode network and interior insula together, I start to go toward the salience network, which is what you see in deliberate yeah. mind wandering. But when I take the interior insula out, I get mind wandering, like the spontaneous mind wandering, which is toward boredom, mm -hmm. which stays in the default mode network. So that means that boredom is the incapacity to go from a default mode network to the salience network. Now, when you say incapacity, what what do you what do you, right. do you have right. what are your ideas of causes is, is, oh, okay. is there a so cause is this. there I is believe there, there is. underlying I believe there is okay I believe there is. that's where the rabbit hole becomes interesting is it, this is this is going to become the point where I'm like will you just cure me on the podcast tell me what the fuck I need to yeah, do exactly just tell me what I need to know <laughs> no, right? like everybody else I'm like just give me my diagnosis right so right no but <laughs> that becomes interesting so um <laughs> Let's start with the default mode network first. Okay. So, because th there's actually many rabbit holes that comes out of that paper, if you know where to look, that are very interesting. So, they take what they saw, basically, so that default mode network is activated and everything. One part that does not work is the prefrontal cortex. Right. So, there's something called the... Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the yeah, the, it was the deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dorsal lateral uh, prefrontal cortex, it won't matter. That, that is basically not being uh, activated during boredom. Okay. Right. There's a rabbit hole that I'd finish the podcast with on that one because that, the DLPFC is, has a major effect between the, in the theory of mind. I need to explain a little bit because it will matter a lot. I swear, when you all put right, all that together, all right. it's magic, man. It, it, oh, it, it's, it's beautiful when you put it together. The theory of mind is what I talked about it on podcast, is that theory that I can relate to you from what I do. And exclusively through. Through, through me. Through your own experience. Right, yeah. which makes sense because you can only access the world through your own senses. Yeah. So that means that the world does not exist outside of your perception. Yeah. I'm not going, I'm not saying Copenhagen interpretation. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just saying like for you to understand the world, you first need to understand yourself. Like it goes to your understand, the entire thing of yourself that you understand others. I think, and I think fundamentally that is from a prediction standpoint, the only way that it can work. It's the only way that it can work. So yeah. that matters why, because remember when we were babies and then you, your first way to change the world is through your caretaker and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That means that really you, you understand the world through you change the world through the through social bonds with your caretakers and everything. So changing the world means uh, an, it's an affective system in that sense, mm -hmm. right? I mean, cognition is through an affective system. That will matter a lot. So the, the theory of mind, the idea is I understand me, therefore I can understand you. But I will only understand you based on what I, I, I can understand of myself. Yeah. That's very important. We talked about that with ego. 
I can only understand the way you smile based on the way I smile. Yeah. So if you have a smile that I do not have, I will not understand what it means. Same reason my dog Fletch has no idea what's going on when a dog gets angry. Right. He's like, exactly. What? He looks at me like, what the fuck? What is? Yeah. It? I, I, I don't I do know. Not I, I don't yeah. know what this is. Exactly. You cannot recognize that. Yeah. So what was very interesting? It's it's a separate paper that we put on the library on the entire library where it was showing that uh, the part of the brain in the theory of your mind that matter was the DL PFC. Right, and that was associated with third person. So the difference was when I uh, th theory of mind is it's not empathy, but it's empathy is part of it. It's just understanding you, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we, they were trying to uh, they, they had sentences written starting with I or with he, he or she doesn't matter, right? And 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 understanding others based based on that sentence. So someone says. I like rice or whatever, and then it's written like this, but understanding it's another person than you, that I activated a certain part of the brain. Mm -hmm. When he said, when, when the sentence says he likes rice, that was another part of the brain. Okay. And that was the DLPFC. Okay. Right. So that, we have to put this in a corner because it will become interesting. Because that basically the he, right, the third person is in the DLPFC, and that's going to be very interesting. So now we're going back to the uh, to step number one. So it seems that you cannot engage the salience network. That's what boredom is, and so that disagreeable feeling, that that almost painful feeling of boredom, seems to be like your winds are spinning. Mm -hmm. You're trying to get in the salience network, but you can't. No. And that's where I think the discomfort comes from. Like you, you know, you really want to do this, and mm -hmm. you can't. You cannot switch. Yeah. Right. So interestingly, in the default mode network that we saw that is activated in boredom, we saw the medial prefrontal uh, cortex. Do you remember what's on the left ventral medial prefrontal uh, cortex? The no. seat of the... I'm quizzing him, <laughs> but it's for all of you. It's the seat of the me. Okay. Remember that? Yeah. The me, right. Me, uh, so the me is in the default mode network, and it's the left ventral uh, medial prefrontal cortex, or so the VMPFC, okay. right? So that means the me has something to do with boredom as well. That's a very important part. Well, it's the entire medial prefrontal cortex, but we know on the left, the me is, is located there. So that means that the notion of me is a very important- Has to be present. Has to or be present. is a part of that equation. Boredom, yeah. Okay. And remember what's not from theory of mind is that third person. That third person is absent, but that first person is very much present. So it is me, almost devoid of any sort of I don't know, empathy, external yeah. connection, if you were processing of others, right. is out, exactly. required to be out. Exactly, right. Only me, and then what? A disconnection or failed right. attempts at connecting with reality. Exactly. Okay. So that's going to come very importantly toward, uh, when I'm done with this. Like that idea of that. What is reality to you? And that's where I think I, I'm figuring this out. I kid you not. It's very interesting. So, then we, so salience network, right? So, we need the interior insula for the salience network. Very important part of, the, of that right interior insula. So, salience network is the interior insula, not just the right one. But the right interior insula is the seat of, remember? No. Active <laughs> eye. Okay. Remember active eye? Right. That's the selector. Yeah, the, that's, like that's the, the active that's, eye. Yeah. That's okay. So there was a paper showing that for people to do stuff they did not want to do, they were far more effective in talking to themselves in the third person than in the first person. Okay. Right. So that third person is what? When they say, you need to do this, mm -hmm. right? That's the active eye we talked about. Yeah. That is located in the right anterior insula, back to the interior insular cortex. Yeah. Right. So that means that boredom is the inability to go into the salience network. And part of that, one of the hub of the cell network is part of the interior insula. That happens to be the hub of the active eye that happens to be a basically talking to yourself in a third person. Back to theory of mind. Mm -hmm. So they seem that boredom has something to do versus, between me and that third person. That would be your way to connect to the world. And so some sort of gap between me saying, I need to do this. I need to figure this right. out. I need to. I need to this versus you need to go. You need to do this. You need to do exactly. This. Yeah. So it's the incapac your incapacity to say you need to do this. Boredom is I need to do this. Silence network uh, is you need to do this. Executive network is you are doing this. Okay. Right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. the incapacity that you would have to 
order yourself to do something. Right, and remember, what, so incapacity to go from default network to silence network. Yeah. The job is the virtual attention network. That's his job. And the hub of that is the interior, uh, the right interior insula, enfin, the interior insula, yeah. and then especially with the right. So that means that your capacity to say you to yourself is what will allow you to switch network. So boredom is your incapacity to say you to yourself. And, and I thought that can be trained, by the way. Well, that's what I want to know, is how does it be trained? And how, or also, what, ends, what, what makes something slide into that? You know what I mean? Like, like how does one slide into that point where it's, it, is it, it can't just be the external environment, of course not. So no, like, no, no, no. So it's when you get into that heavy bar. Right, so I, did I ever talk about me squatting for 40 in the abyss? Yeah, you just oh, didn't want to be... The, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So what happens at that moment? That, in a way, would be a form of boredom, in a way, mm -hmm. going like that. So, because where I want to go with this, like boredom might be just step one of a much larger issue. I think boredom is a pathology of... Uh, and I want to explain also that the default mode network might not be the default network. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, want to, I want to go in, into all this. But remember, I'm, I'm going under, and I'm like, I don't want to be here. I think that in a way is a form of boredom or maybe like an accented form of whatever boredom is. So boredom is not boredom. It's actually almost like a pathology that is, um, is just a manifestation of something bigger. Yeah. I go under that bar and I'm like, I don't want to be here. Right. <clears throat> How did I fix that? Start screaming. Mm -hmm. Right. So third person, no, you need to start screaming. Okay. So I started to order myself. And I, eh! But... I started to grease the wheel to stop going, I don't, I, 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 me, 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 passive, yeah. I, me, 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 into, no, 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 you need to do this. So I switch from a look inside to a, I switch network. And what is the squad that I eventually manage to get? A pure executive network squad, which is the third step. Okay. So the first one was like conservation of energy. I don't want to be here, don't do this. Almost like a depressed feeling. Yes. I'm going to get to that. <coughs> yeah. Then I go into, no, 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 you order yourself, silence network, you start to do this, you start to, to now to gain meaningful information from the squat, where like I need to put my hips there, then I'm starting to learn yeah. the squat, because, but why do I start learning the squat? Because I actually put my energy into it, whereas before I was refusing to go there, because me and I were, were taking over, and then I go to, no, 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 Either you stop right now or you go. And I decided to go. The second I decided to go, I went from that passive form to that active form. I still don't know how to squat well, but at least I was active. I start to get meaningful information from my squat. I start to go, how do I scream? How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I... Okay. And yeah. now I'm where I should be and I'm squatting better. And eventually I get under the bar like Captain Kirk was talking about and I just squat. That's a pure executive action. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... It can be trained, and the key is that active eye. The key is to be uh, to the capacity to tell yourself, "You need to do this." Well, that's a that you being you telling yourself you need to do this. That sits. Mm -hmm. All right, leave that right there. Okay, that's right. that yeah. as as a as a foundation for what that kind of means. Mm -hmm. But with with boredom, I also my first when I was thinking about it before I had yep. read this stuff. My first inclination was, you know, it seems, in the fact I hadn't thought about this at all either, yeah. it just seems like the mechanism should be related similar to what you describe with anxiety. Mm -hmm. As a driver to action, we be, be actual action or just state change action, but right. something. And, and there is a pull there for it, and, and I'd, I'd, inter right. I'd be interested in hearing where you think maybe boredom and its role, not its role, because it yeah. isn't... No, there's always a function. So, there's it, always a function. Well, I don't even yeah. know that it has a function. It just is kind of a state of a lot of other things that have functions. Right. You know? So it's... Um, where does it sit with the, the phylogenetic hierarchy wheel? Right, right, right. right. Stuff? So first of all, they're going to be... Uh, like the fact that there's apathy and overstimulation reminds you of the two types of depression. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this oppression as depression, right? And then this depression as... The anxiety was so hard, you just shut off. Yeah. So there's a depression from lack of stimulation and the depression from overstimulation, just like boredom. Yeah. Right. And, and I think in that case, too, it's important to note that overstimulation is relative overstimulation to one's tolerance oh, oh, in the anxiety. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I agree. With yeah. Completely. All right. What is depression? Freeze mode. Mm -hmm. Freeze mode is toward the parasympathetic and everything, but that's uh, it's conservation of energy. Conservation of energy is... The default mode network yeah 
So first of all, let's talk about the default mode network on this. We say the default mode. This is where I will disagree. There's been plenty of papers showing that people that are left with their own thoughts for like 15 minutes cannot take it. Remember like there was electrical shock? Mm -hmm. uh, like the guy was left with nothing oh. to do. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then, but all they could do if they wanted it was to tap something that would give them an electrical shock on the finger. There's a dude that ended up showing, shocking himself 200 times in 15 minutes. Because I, obviously nothing is worse than being left alone with I, your thoughts. I feel that guy. Right. Okay. So, well, hold on. Okay. It's not always, the, uh, this is going to, I'm going to totally just play right into your hand here. Yes. I'm going to say, it's not always the thought, but if I'm in a room and there's a little pin with electricity and there's nothing mm -hmm. else to do. Okay. Let me explain. What, what am I going to do here? Right. Okay. Like, so, right. So what if though he says that humans are not, are not, their default mode is not in action. It's action. I would agree with that. Right. So then. If we look at, if, if let's say boredom is a pathology, then it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. There's no good and bad, but I need, I need words. Yeah. So is a, on the same dial as depression, for example, or something like that, right? So let me make that as a prediction and let me see if I go on to that tangent, where do I go? Then that means that the default setting of people is toward action everything would be more toward the salience network mm -hmm. and the executive network this is where we can go at circadian rhythm well, that's, on that. well plus that's for if just fundamentally that's where you are literally processing information finding and patterns acting on it. and acting and making changes in your world for your reconciling predictions your right. everything i can define that is what life is for i would agree completely. and everything in what we're describing as the the whole default mode network, but let's say more towards something like freeze, just as a whole, right. is solely for like triage-based energy conservation. I think it goes, it go, yeah, I think it goes further than that. I think yeah. there's a, by the way, we could link that to circadian rhythm. During the day's action, sales network, executive network, task positive. That would make sense. Yeah. Nighttime would be task negative. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, okay, yeah. so, but let's say the default, so that there is not a default network. There is basically based on state, right? Mm -hmm. During the day, it would be action. But at night, it would be conservation of energy. So there's an entire thing that is very interesting there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, in, the, in that I suppose, and we probably will have to make a note going forward, that when we say default mode network, we're meaning it in the term that the it term, is, right. as opposed to that right. it is exactly. our default So state. first, I think, yeah, this is the first problem with the default mode network. It's not the default mode network. Yeah. At least during the day, it seems obvious that it's a ser the task positive network is the mm -hmm. default setting. Salience and... That. So that means that boredom is the incapacity to be in, a, in, your, in your normal setting. Right. Yeah. Right. So that means that the default mode network, in a way, is the, is the stuff that stops you from doing things. That backs you off. Where do we, what do we see in the default mode network? Morals. Yeah. Morals are there to stop you from doing things. Yeah. Episodic memory. Because you go like, fuck, what just happened? You yeah. know, what happened? So it's the stuff that you're going to need. I remember the tonic freeze part? Like you're in a fight and you go, ooh. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. That tonic freeze is there because you're about to get killed. Mm -hmm. So it's to stop you from acting f with, for, with very positive results. Yeah. Stopping you from acting is not always bad. Morals are not always bad. Mm -hmm. It's to stop you because society needs needs morals yeah. right so what if the default mode network its function truly is a tonic freeze is to make you think about the shit you just did so but it's there to stop you from doing things mm -hmm. right so that means that boredom would be you getting stuck in not being able to do things which is the way in a way the the same pain lesser than what depression will do will be so what does a person, I mean, from a practical standpoint, though, like removing, uh, of course, this is me just picking apart your yeah, thing, yeah, right? Go ahead, so, go ahead. so if like, if it's, if it's, if it's morals and memory and all these other things that are providing, you may be just caution or voice of maybe even just noise, a slight pull more yeah. than anything, because I don't think mm -hmm. it's um, literally presented in yeah. front of you in that way. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Not yeah. always. But like, why, like, like, I don't know. I just don't understand why you can't just 
power through or right or but like, that's a salience is, network no no that's a salience network well, but, 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 what, salience but what network. i'm saying is so so we're talking about how there's a gap between the two there's a switch that's not getting hit right yeah somehow yes yeah, yeah, yeah okay and, and, and so I'm, why is and, that and switch all I'm, all I'm, I'm, i just don't i, I see a, a state a, a faulty state there's too much time in this state missile right line. yeah but like where do we where do we what go? if it's the me overpowering the you now let's let's go back to the theory of mind right where uh, we see that the bottom does not allow you to see, uh, to see basically you other third person. Yeah. What if the theory of mind really, because again, we see only the world through our own senses. Mm -hmm. So what if your vision of the world depends on the third person? How so? Um, you have the you. You talk to yourself about yeah. like, you know, you need to do this. That's yeah. a third person. We saw that theory of mind basically is based on the third person as well. So, you, you know, like a, like a Markov blanket is that bubble you see, you see the world through yeah. and then the world act, interact with you through that. Okay, so let's imagine it's not, but let's just as a stuff. If that you is your Markov blanket, that third person is a Markov blanket. Okay. Talking to myself in the, in the third person, right, is... Allow is basically the filter through which I'm going to see the world kind of because that's my that's my bl Markov blanket yeah. to the world. Yeah, translating, presenting everything. Right, translation of the outside world yeah. is me talking in a third person. Okay. Right. So that means that me me talking to myself in a third person will also interact with the world, just like the world will interact with me talking to myself in a third person. So what if me in the third person is actually my representation of the world, going both ways? Okay. So. That means that when the world becomes something I don't want to engage in, for whatever reason, the me in the third person gets smashed. Pull me back. in the that active I gets smashed. I end up falling in the me. Well, and it's, I suppose it's me. it's just a matter of you gradually. All right, so I can't trust that representation. Just like everything else, you pull back to right. towards a less exposed state. Right. You or want. you have trained your me, I, yeah. to be far too powerful versus your active I versus you, you talking to yourself in a third person. If you had an issue with authority, you <laughs> would refuse your own authority. Yeah, interesting. Refusing your own authority will lead you to get bored, will lead you to be in freeze all the time. Yeah. And so what would you have? You have either uh, executive network because you need to get shin down or you go back to the me. What would suffer would be the silence network, which means you would not be able to gather meaningful information from the world, keep repeating the same mistakes, be overactive, completely executive network, or falling back toward boredom, which is a mild depression in that case. What you would lack is the silence network because you are not capable of accepting your own authority. I really thought you were just going to tell me how to not be bored anymore. Julie. Yeah, but that's exactly <laughs> how. It. No, but that's exactly what yeah. I'm explaining. That yeah. means that developing the active eye is the way to not get bored anymore. Are you bored when we But it's supposed try? to be easy, Julian. Yes, well, that's a, like, this no, is yeah, but by definition, <laughs> then it won't be. Yeah. Right, yeah. so by definition, it won't be. So what do you need to do? You need to suck it up. You need to, you know, like all, all the seals talking about it, all yeah. that stuff. That means that the only way out of boredom, for example, is to burn the question. Yeah. yeah. That I hate being bored. Now I understand why. And that's probably why the burn the question and the training is so important to me because at that moment, I am, I am the source of authority that makes me go two steps mm -hmm. further. Yeah. That's the burn the question, isn't it? You know, I said that the burn the question was creating the active eye. Yeah. Right. Even through the right interior and so on and everything. But what is the active eye is not. You do two steps. Mm -hmm. The source of authority on yourself. So maybe it's not that you hate authority in the world nearly as much as you at your own authority don't make this about me whoa you as in <laughs> everyone yeah no but then yeah. then that would be me i mean i refuse my own authority remember when we said ego mm -hmm. right yeah. it's not that you can't listen to others because you can't listen to yourself so that's the theory of mine back to it that the real issue is not other people's authority you cannot accept your own hmm. so maybe you were overtrained toward the me Look at Facebook. Look at the world we live yeah. in. We're all so fucking soft. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. We're all very soft. For right. Sure. So we are maybe overtraining morals. Look at morals right now. Now that people are fear. Like everybody's coming from a high moral ground. Everybody is coming from a high freeze. Mm -hmm. From a basically bored, kind of depressed mode. From a default yeah. mode network mode. Right? Mm -hmm. And what are they incapable of doing? Gathering 
meaningful information on the virus. Everybody is following orders. No one is looking. Yeah. Like we keep talking about no one wants to even comment on the stuff we say, which is, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will disagree on what we say about the COVID-19. But at least we're looking at podcasts. We're looking at numbers. We are trying to get meaningful information yeah. on the subject. Yeah. Right. So that's the salience network. What most people are doing, they are reverting back to the default mode network, which is that weird freeze mode. So they all bored out of their mind. What's interesting is when you mention it in that capacity, in the default mode network, everything that sits in there is also only about uh, confirming existing information. Isn't it usually? I mean, there's well, no, yeah. there is no exploration. Or no, there is not. Processing, it's, meaning, meaning everything. So the longer you a person stays in that network, or if you have a, right. like you say, a pathology with which yep. keeps you in that network uh, for longer than usual, you're literally not doing the things with which you're supposed to be doing. So it's an echo chamber. From a, well, not that as well. From yeah. a, from learning, of from course, everything. Yeah. Um, it'd be everything becomes just confirmation. But also when you talk about fundamentally with life with where right. we're supposed to be interacting with the yeah. environment and coming up with hypotheses and, and that's, gathering and data. And that's depression. And that all sits completely exactly. frozen out. That's an echo chamber. That's what depression is. Yeah. And that would be more toward... So when do you need the default mode network? At night, when your day is over, then you can think, did I do today? Does that fit my morals? Does that fit society? The like episodic memory mm -hmm. retrieval where you go like, what did I do today? Ooh, that part right there. Ugh, that yeah. That's the time when you can ponder about what you did. But imagine if you're stuck in it all day. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you associate that with circadian rhythms, right, then yeah. you could see how fucking that up would worsen the symptom of, let's say, schizophrenia. Totally. Yeah. Because yeah. the brain networks are scrambled. Yeah. So what if brain networks have circadian, are part of the circadian rhythms? Or well, vice versa, it would on. have to be. I, I mean, well, I think everything would... Right. If, if not that they're like... Are are the mechanism their their performance should be right. in in uh, right. what's the word so in synchronicity? What if it? boredom is basically the equivalent of having protein during the day? Yeah, you're just yeah. you're not supposed to be there. That's true. Yeah, and that's another thing too is that boredom isn't this like ex it can be, but it's not this like state of suffering. It's just kind of this like oh, I, I would know. disagree. It feels like that to me. Well. I've, well, I was going to say that so as not to be over dramatic, but yeah, it does kind of suck. To me, it's a state, and when, it's and a when state it's, of and suffering. When I'm the, for me, does it feel good? No. Then it's no. a state of suffering. I, I do the like, I mean, I just like will pace. <laughs> I with, and, and you're right, actually, it is pretty maddening now that I think about right, it. But look at depression. Like at the way I manage when... boredom is not fucking <laughs> good. Yeah, right. yeah. It's a state of, yeah. it's a state of suffering. Yeah. yeah that's wild. Right. And that's, again, what people say about, a little bit the same about depression. So what if boredom is the equivalent of protein during the day? You're just not supposed to be there. That is, this is not the time for you to think me, me, me. And that, by the way, can be a societal problem mm -hmm. as much as anything. We are trained to be soft and social media is what do I want? What do I need? What do we tell people all the time? You can be everything you want. Fuck no, you yeah. can't. That is not true. All this is feeding the default mode network, the me, the I, the, all that stuff. Where does, you know, so you, you talk about getting from, now do you have to go from the default to salience to executive? Is that, I mean, is that, do those things all have to pass through each other? Well, or is one if you able go to, to executive kind of... network, that means you, you are taking action without having the proper information on the subject you, i'm pretty right. sure you can do that sounds yeah. about right yeah, yeah so listen, i'm uh, sitting right here yeah exactly <laughs> no well look at I, I don't know yeah. if one needs to go i don't know yeah or at the very least you're not spending enough time on the transit or, or whatever but my but, guess is for example like the bear is coming you you usually you go through the wheel but you, it can be almost instantaneous yeah so it's very possible like you have to go through salience first. But that being said, no one is saying that the transition doesn't take a quarter of a millisecond. Yeah, or, or that then when we're talking about not being able to, it's that you're not spending, say, enough time in that, in that network over the right. course of the Right, but there month, might be, year, by the way, like, there might be switches that allow you to go straight to executive because yeah. you don't have the time to think. Well, because we mentioned this, this very on, on, most likely. On, on the boredom side of things, and it's been yeah. something I've been working with quite a bit lately for the last couple months. Um, you know, but also with moving, getting all the stuff, you know, yeah. moving up apartments, yeah. you all the shit, new country mm -hmm. stuff, visa right. stuff. 
it seems like there is this like hurry up and wait aspect to a lot right. of it. So I'm just kind of in these holding patterns with 10 million things that I kind of have to do. A lot of them you can't. And you're just like, eh. But then when I go to do them, often, we were talking about this earlier, there's right. a lot of bureaucracy or mess or this right. and just steps and a trip back. And this guy doesn't want to do shit. And so now my kind of process goes, I got this pile of stuff to do. And then I, and then when I do it, I just jam, 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 jam. And then, you know, if someone gets in the way or there's some poor courier who's fucking right. up my day yeah. who won't fucking give me my goddamn cell phones, Vodafone. Uh, like, 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 phone. like yeah. I just want to rip their fucking head off immediately. Right. And so then every task that I have to go to, I got to go down to T-Mobile and I'm just like, right. But that's I pure wanna, executive nature. Yeah. That's right. why I think I only have been, had to just like fight my way through those little things right? and then pull back and wait. And right. so that middle gap has been, uh, and so that middle gap gets wider, be, and right. wider and wider and wider. And so that would be the silence network. So now the question is, is the silence network and that refusal of authority, are they linked? From what I'm reading and all the stuff I was going through, yeah. I, would, I would think so. I would think that that third person thing yeah. is your connection to the world, is how you see reality. Again, as a, almost like a, it's not a mark of blanket, but anyway, as a mark of blanket, which means that's how the world talks to you, mm -hmm. and that's how you talk to the world. What if, that active eye, the you, that third person, is your mark of blanket to the world. Is the way the world communicates. The world tells you things through that authority, and you tell the world things through that authority. Because that's how you're going to change the world, is through the active eye anyway, not through the me. It's also interesting when you speak on kind of your own authority, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean, how we view our own authority yep. in that capacity. And then when you take that to see or, and compare it to what we see with a lot of anxious and depressed behavior involving things which just like unreasonable like self-sabotage right. and those types of yep. things um some of those self-sabotaging behaviors that me you everybody's kind of found themselves in at some point i think they can also lead you to question your own authority if you will in in that capacity because the right? world made you the, question the, yeah, yeah you exactly. know what i mean right well in that in that if 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 people go in and they learn that they can't trust themselves their own judgment their own thing mm -hmm. their own you start to think oh i am lazy i am this yes. and, and then that becomes i am lazy not you need to do this. exactly right and, and, first and so thing that goes thing yeah when the world beats you down too much first thing that goes is you need to do this yeah. is your own authority is the first thing that goes yeah and now because now you're basically going into freeze going like oh maybe i need to rethink what i did yeah so the first thing you do is you you Destroy your own authority over yourself. So there's a connection with the the boredom thing and these these networks, and I think some of uh, I think that self sabotaging behavior that we see mm -hmm. sometimes in yep. um, in those types of things. I just I really think that there is there is some sort of a play off of here. So as, what as if well. boredom is the weakening of your own authority? Yeah, I mean. Fundamentally, that seems like... That's, that's what it is. Yeah. So, for them, boredom then, for them. Boredom would be something that needs to be fought as the evil that it is. Mm -hmm. It is the, I mean, boredom is the world grinding you down. Yeah. Making you lose author, your own authority over yourself. So, boredom is you looking at the world in a worse shape. So, boredom is what makes you see the world as a problem is a is a symptom mm -hmm. of so if you accept that then you accept the world as a place that you do not want to engage with mm -hmm. yeah and then you would see authority issues conspiracy theories <laughs> um but then yeah. a lot of boredom would means this is a world i do not want to engage with yeah right but that's a giving up on let me change the world remember how do you change the somatic error you gotta well what do you mean as far as so, so how do you change the somatic error Two you ways. change the way you feel about it or you, or change, you the change the world or the world yeah. so if i'm not changing the world active i let me authority mm -hmm. let me change the world what do i do i need to change it's not the world it's me yeah i need to yeah. change the prediction so boredom would be a symptom of a somatic error just like anxiety. So boredom would be 
a boredom, anxiety, all that stuff is actually the same thing. They're just all kind of this. It's the, it's yeah. the just gradients of the same issue. Mm -hmm. So what if boredom is a pre-anxiety? Yeah. Is this basically is a low grade anxiety and so that needs to be fought. So then boredom in that sense is a call for action. Well, that's interesting. So then we, you could talk about where somebody maybe sits and then we haven't even spoken about this, but mm -hmm. you know, it's like, if do you feel bored X amount of times per week or more, right? Just mm -hmm. generally, yeah. um, do you feel anxiety, you know, in, intensely on these things? Right. And, and, and I think we can, you can start to see maybe where people sit in the level of severity. Right. with those things too based on the frequency of these types of things and the and the weight that they do carry because right. um, yeah. a, a huge anxiety attack is going to be very different than a little bit of boredom but they all may have started somewhere and just run but out of control but they might be well. the same thing just one is let's say there's a, a dial yeah. right and the, there's a dial that goes one way or the other let's say the dial two are negative just starts with boredom and then goes to anxiety mm -hmm. what if it's the same thing just felt at a different intensity yeah. What is anxiety? Just boredom more intense. Or yeah. boredom is anxiety, just not, not that intense. So we gave, I remember like uh, we were talking about interoception and then the fact that you feel, sometimes your body feels things that you won't even go to a conscious mind. Mm -hmm. Right. What if boredom and then the second is like you can feel something, you just can't, it's not strong enough to put in actual words. Yeah. And then you have the third one where then you feel, what if boredom, we can't define it because it's stage number two of the same thing. And stage three is anxiety. Because then you can, yeah. you can define anxiety, but you can't define boredom. Unless we talk about it, it's never defined. No, people don't know what boredom is. Yeah. Because at st stage two, it's not strong enough for you to define it through conscious thoughts. But you know it's there. Yeah. Remember we talked about this in the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Right. What if boredom is stage two? Anxiety is stage three. That means there's a stage one. What, well, that's what... And well, that's what, a somatic what, error. Yeah. So what I was going to say is this boredom seems like one of our first indicators. Exactly. Of, of, of exactly. this... Of this Second error yes, exactly. But, right. but in right, your, right. you said yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the error it's itself. coming to it's coming to the conscious self, mm -hmm. right? Of a somatic error be, and a breakdown of your authority over yourself because the world has told you that you are not capable, worthy, whatever you and want to see it. What's, but is, it is interesting in that when you talk about the speaking, all of that still comes to me in the sense of words. When we're talking about all, you we know, but to, it does yeah, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Even cause, cause because even because he came to because thoughts, even yeah. in those moments when you are making yourself right. do something, maybe you can have that pull and whatever to make that change in state and action, whatever, mm -hmm. without words. But I think in a lot of cases in your head, it's going to be like, oh, Ju Julian, let's do this. You know what I mean, or, right. or whatever. Stop. Tyler, like, so there's that conversation where you're like, dude, stop doing this where but, you talk to yourself but the severity is interesting because as the severity increases from this boredom that you maybe barely detect yeah to this exactly. thing where you're just like this moment where, when this. boredom yeah. switches to whatever's on the other side of it of the higher magnitude it is just like i cannot fucking handle this like i've gotten up so and just been like ah oh. what is anxiety a yeah. call to action yeah right so you start so then you've you found right. the thing right. but what i find is that that mo at that break there's a fuck. There's words there. Right. I may not have right. had it until the moment when I hit that mm -hmm. break to where I realize right. that I'm bored or realize that it's b something I don't want. Right. But that realization is not. I don't even think that is as simple as just boredom. I think I've already passed that point. Exactly to the point where now it becomes conscious so that you can switch to the executive network. Yeah, and you're supposed to be using words, but at that point, point if that because thing hasn't you did been it built, to, because you waited way too long. Yeah. So that means that what you have to build is our authority over yourself. Yeah. So how does how do we start that with the little things, like you go train. Mm -hmm. We know that from training. How do yeah. you squat six hundred pounds? You know what? You go you go squat. Yeah. And some days you go squat light because you feel like shit, but yeah. the, that's probably, that session is probably not the best idea, but you going to the gym is. Mm -hmm. So don't, maybe you're hurting, so not a barbell, a sandbag, but at least, you, you know that like, like the first, like you start the program or the template and everything, the first two, three weeks, you're like, motherfucker, yeah. like I'm bitter, but you make yourself mm -hmm. go to the gym. Yeah. So the only problem with that is the authority is me. Is I'm a, the authority that makes you go to the gym, right? But eventually, what we tell people, I want, I want you to be the authority. Yeah. I want you to make yourself go to the gym, because otherwise, I'm just telling you what to do and not how to do mm -hmm. it. So if you look at strong fit, what we're trying to give you is the capacity to be your own authority, which will change the way you see the world. Then. 
Yeah. Right. So do not accept me as the authority. You need to you need to be your own authority. Otherwise, you go from board to back to executive and everything. So the key to all this seems to be that building our own authority over ourselves is a main key. Yeah. And that's something like all those dudes who talk about like, you know, like that SEAL guy that goes everywhere, like, uh, you know, that did the SEAL training with broken legs, or I can't remember his name, but he runs all the time. He, uh, Is that the Goggins? That yeah, 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 that yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suck, learn to suck it up, all that stuff. What do they all say, military is like, make your bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Because that's authority. It's like, I don't want to do it exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But... Me don't want to do it. Well, that's interesting. I, that, active I. The, to the do thing it. you just made there's a really interesting tie in at the root of a lot of these things that people talk about that work. Yeah. Habits, journaling, planning oh, your day, recapping your day. Exactly. And and you're right. Maybe in my head I always looked at that like uh, like just some really weak ass form of conformity. The me would. But 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 yeah. yeah. But but it, but in that in that is you're building your own authority over yourself. Exactly. And I don't know that I've ever thought of it that way. I know. Well, yeah. neither did I until last week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I started reading that shit. So what about, where does this fly in? Well, I'm asking this for myself, only yeah. in that yeah. I always have a, have trouble with uh, flow state in general. Even my, what I would describe as flow state. There's states, something in the paper on that. Fucking is like it's this red line yes. version of like just... So flow state seems to be basically the opposite of boredom. I don't want to say opposite because they're not opposite on a scale. But the neurologically speaking... There's a counter... It seems to be like boredom is incapacity to pay attention, whereas flow is hyper attention. Kind of, yeah. It's weird because flow, I in guess... A, in, in a pleasant way. So hyper it's all, attention in almost a way in that's a pleasurable not, way. Yeah. In a pleasurable way. Yeah. You're in the zone. Yeah. That zone seems to be, neurologically speaking, the opposite of boredom, basically. So, so, really, so remember flow So flow is, the is about anxiety. connectivity, whereas right. boredom is truly just dis, is disconnectivity. Okay. Right, so that means that you need to build that. So how do you build that authority over yourself? With the small steps where you start to play guitar, but yeah. then there has to be the next step. Well, that there's you little... You the, make yourself do stuff. What's interesting is, is, is not to turn this, the pressure. Well, I don't want to make the thing into some fucking, like, sitting on the couch therapy session. But it, no, but it's good, uh, because that's they can relate to it. Well, yeah, because yeah. I think everybody can relate to this amidst exactly. the last few months. That's the only way they is, can relate is to Is when it. I yeah. look at the things that have been changed, as this problem for me is something that's always been present. Um, and it, but it is just gradual. Sometimes it's better. Sometimes it's worse. As it's become more prominent in these last few months, really maybe yeah. a year, big lifestyle changes. Yeah. But I look at the things <laughs> that yeah. go away, the things that, that uh, and, and just from a routine standpoint only, mm -hmm. right? Where we're building mm -hmm. habits, like you said. Well, the alarm clock went away. Mm -hmm. I don't wake up to an alarm clock really ever, but I also don't wake up at a fixed, consistent yeah. time where I just am making myself get up at a time and do it. Could be that, yeah. Th th there's, there's that one. There's also the rigid structure of getting up and going into a workplace. Work. Exactly. And so what I'm having to do is find ways to do work without any of those things mm -hmm. that I hate because I don't like authority. Yeah. So what I've been doing is being like, cool, I do everything my way. But it makes but it kind really. of harder. Exactly. And... Not really. And well, and yeah. exactly. And then it starts. But but what I find is that starts slipping. Yeah, of Just course. Just a little bit and a little because bit. Because you're going further into the me. So yeah. the default mode network, because it's conservation of energy, is a um, is quicksand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then and then of course my my what look at say my other routines since I came here that have changed my uh, getting up and having about an hour on the bus to read to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. That's kind of gone. Right. I can, you know, I can bike there, but it's yeah. a different thing. It's a different experience. Look, the There's also of rituals. Yeah, the all of those rituals. rituals yeah. Going to my coffee place to have right. to work exactly to sit down and have a place where mm -hmm. I go and work. I every step of going to that place is me it, saying, "All right, Tyler, grab your bed. We're gonna, you know what I mean? Exactly. I, you, you're going you to are, do this thing. This is where you're going. So maybe this that's is, why we like rituals so much because yeah, the world makes sense. You know why the world makes sense? Yeah. Because you build the authority over yourself, which allows you to see the world in, as a good place. Mm -hmm. So maybe rituals, because rituals are actually an embodiment of our own authority well, over I've, ourselves. I've talked about this to you for <clears throat> a while in that um, I knew that I wasn't a 4 a.m. person when I started a CrossFit gym. <laughs> For about a year, getting up yeah. 4 a.m. every day, like I could do it. I always did it. I could do it. Uh, I hate every second. But yeah. my, 
but so after that, I just, I was like, I'm not doing 4 a.m. But I never then rebuilt a morning routine. Right. So my mornings are like, kind of like, yeah. no, but do I work now? Like, do I train? Like how everybody I? makes fun of me for all my rituals. I ritual say, always know where you are in the morning and stuff like <laughs> that. But now I understand why. Because especially on the road, it was no. the only way I had to keep control over myself. Yeah. And of course, then we can get into the over control, under control aspects of, with of which, which, which you could... Uh, would we talk as something like obsessive compulsive disorder where then you are building control, control, control around every aspect for that alone versus someone then like me, which has okay. no control. If we look at, so even at circadian rhythms, you would still need both. Yes. Right. But what, what I found fascinating in the idea is that the circadian rhythm should apply to the brain networks. That means there is a time to think about me I and everything. And so, for example, something that would be very destructive is social media. Yeah. I mean, that social media during the day, because it is based on me, I, and not... For sure. Unless, okay, so you could be watching videos of great lifters before you train, going like, I need to, you know, like, I'm, yeah. Julian, yeah. you're going to go and you're going to leave that shit. Yeah. Right. So that would be good. But then looking at girls or this is how come she doesn't like me? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be, what if there's second reasons for that too? Yeah. Because remember how we grew up as a species, how we evolved as a species. During the day, it's like, it's either I'm going to get killed or I'm going to kill something. But yeah. right now, I don't have time. And then at night is when the shaman puts you around the fire. And then we talk about the day and where the tribe is going and all mm -hmm. that shit. So maybe there's a circle with them in that too that we lost contact with. Yeah. Right. But first and foremost, I think that idea of uh, authority over yourself is the key. And so when you see yourself refusing authority with others, which has been me for a very long time, Somewhere, it's the, it's the incapacity of, of having authority over myself. Mm -hmm. And how did I fix that? With training. Yeah. With training, it was like, no, you're finishing. No, it's burn the questions. It's like, I'm going to go at the end of that parking lot. Well, if you look at everybody who has, you're gonna go everyone who has had a, a point where it's like, oh, I remember when I used to be able to do this, or mm -hmm. I used to be able to train like this, is, is that what they want is really that authority over their, themselves exactly. again, because they feel the like they don't have to, that yeah. control. Right. It, by the way, it took me three, four months to get back from training, but then suddenly training makes sense again. Yeah. Like I have that connection with training again. Why? Because it's going up. Because And what happens when you fail weight or you don't progress and the world is mean to you? You go back to mm -hmm. the formal network, what happened? Which tonic freeze is necessary when you get punched in the face so that you don't keep getting punched? So it's necessary to go like, how come I'm not getting better at lifting, for example? Because it means you're doing something wrong. So the formal network is there to pull you back and go like, where did we go wrong? But what if I get pulled back so much that I'm always like, what did I do wrong? And I'm only thinking. Then I'm never actually doing anything. Yeah. And that's called depression. Yeah. So that it pulls you back so far that you actually don't do anything. It's a very interesting piece. I think you've, I think the, the pieces you put together with, the, I think the routine thing is very interesting. Yeah. I think only because that seems to, people seem to have lots of success with that on its own, it has worked, but without understanding it the why, necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it could be done much more, maybe not more usefully, but I think more people understanding that why I think yeah. will make more. You want to know the reason why I never would have got on board with any of that stuff was because I just didn't want to be like locked into a bunch of shit I didn't want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like anything like that, anything from uh, making your bed was like, oh, why? Right. It, logically, it wouldn't connect. Ugh, why? Because, and so yeah. there's all yeah. those things where. I could never understand why that did matter. And if mm -hmm. you told me because it's about character or something, and I would say, well, I think making your bed only to fucking make a mess out of it again is a big fucking waste of your time and says a lot more about your character than it does mine. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Quit doing mindless shit right. and wasting your energy but for that, fucking I remember nothing. Remember, Mark Blanket works apparently has a purpose. Ways. And by the way, most of those people who advocate those things, at least publicly, have maybe accomplished a little more than I have. So I should listen to no, them. But, but authority is not the thing that I do. So just because right, remember, Mark Blanket goes the other way around. If authority were to pound you early on too much, yeah. then you would hate authority to the point that you refuse to have authority over yourself. Yeah. Well, and I it think, goes both ways. Yeah. And I think most of, and I think a lot of those are trends that. I suppose you're right. I suppose there is a there's like this macro over the course of your lifetime, some of the trends and reactions. Yeah. I do think that this, from what I've seen in the lifestyle change in the quarantine, and how my mm -hmm. relationship yep. to boredom and things like that have been, um, I think that this is a thing that can shift very quickly. 
So we talked about boredom as an early indicator. I do think that show, changes are shown in this avenue very quickly. Yeah. And I think people can show up to a place of anxiety not knowing what anxiety is. Oh, even just, how they got there. And they're yeah. just there and they don't even know what it is. Right. So they just feel that this is the way I am. And so, exactly. And then by doing that, they are back in a default mode. But if we can understand that thing. boredom, that every three, four, five year old kid is to, I'm bored. Yeah. Like, like that's right. a feeling you can kind of connect to. And that the more often you're seeing that, maybe you need to start looking into what you're right. doing. Right. Because there's, again, there's different kind of boredom. There's the one that is lack of stimulus because during the day, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be doing stuff. Yeah. So you force a boy that needs physical exertion in a classroom, he's bored. Yeah. Because you actually are messing up with his uh, circadian rhythm unless it's a subject that interests him, yeah. which makes him go toward the salience network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly... Because exactly I'm pretty way. sure, for example, me, my, my first really true relationship with authority was school. Yeah. Forcing yeah. me yeah. into a default mode network because the, my salience network could not work since they were just asking me to memorize. Memorization is default mode network. Mm -hmm. Understanding is salience network. But memorization, that's, we know that, that's, a, that's the default mode yeah. network. Well, plus doing that, like at school at an early on age, is that, is that where being confined is kind of the nature of it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, right. is, is that if boredom, if, if you're not engaged, you're everything but handcuffed to that desk you don't get up oh. you don't i mean i've i've i remember childhood. sitting there yeah. just yeah it's like prison. just like i feel like prison. i mean not just like like a kid going oh but yeah. like in that state where i'm like i am gonna rip this fucking i hate apart. everyone yeah. and and that went all the way high school yeah. like eight years right. old to, to co my two attempts at college so you were could that see, way. Yeah, so you could see where authority from the beginning would be an issue. Remember, mm -hmm. it goes both ways. Yeah. So that made, but that would make you basically refuse to have authority over yourself. And that means not developing the interior and solar mm -hmm. and, like, and uh, the salience network, which means, and you could see why, that to this day, you have a trouble going into the salience network. Yeah. Well, and that's why my problem solving is exactly as it is, which is the, it's, right. it's very, like we've talked about in the past, my, my workflow, my problem solving in general, it works and it's effective. It is very costly. Right. In that it yeah. is from an energy standpoint. Not developed. Well, because yeah. we, we talk about this in, uh, just in the idea of learning. Yeah. Is that what I am doing when I do those things like, all right, we're going to try this. I got to come up with a million different ways, all the variables, mm -hmm. all our options, duh, 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 and brew this up. That's the worst and most at least efficient way to fucking do that because it is pure processing power. Just like yeah. in chess, uh, mm -hmm. you know, trying to just process every possible scenario from out there and doing it. And that is kind of how I address things. Yeah. It's this like probability thing. And it's fucking maddening and it takes a lot of energy. Right. It takes and so then, much Well, energy. and then when I, but the problem is when I, as I've seen this, this last few months, my ability to focus on the thing and then send that processing mm -hmm. to it. Now I start skipping from one to the other because I get that boredom attention, yep. even with the things I'm trying to work yep. on. And then it's just, it's, it's really, really, really challenging trying to stay sharp right. and make the right decisions so, and weigh the right options because you're not present in the building world Building rituals solve. and sticking to them no matter what yeah. would be the way to build authority. Because if you have rituals, sometimes you're going to go, why am I doing this? Yeah. Not because I said so, because you said so. Yeah. And then, but you stick to them then until you build, until you clash with the like, is that my own authority? And until you make peace with that side of you. Mm -hmm. Once you can make peace with your own authority, then you can build ritual and stick to them no matter what. Yeah. So that's the key. Build well, rituals, stick to them. Yeah, and on the ritual side, it's funny, is as I've noticed these things, it's when the rituals have been. So now we're locked up the... Not locked up. You know what I'm saying. Our, yeah. our options are much more limited. And, my, yeah. and with life being in transition, there is all that flux. So there is and like, I, I have to live, I have to more. move, I have to and have the, this. And that hits and you, you have, in the face. Yeah. Right. So, so rituals is a thing where like, yeah, for me, I, it's, it's like, what rituals? But also, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it also means that whenever life hits you, your first answer during the day anyway, has to be, fuck no. Yeah. I refuse. Yeah. Like I will not let life diminish my own authority toward myself. I think I said most of that to the people at Vodafone and they didn't Good. think that. <laughs> Good. Right. But the key is, can you go, can you get there? Can yeah. you do that without having to get there yeah. to that stage? Yeah. Because you're going way past. So at the first sign of boredom, that would be when you go like, dude, I am not wasting my days like yeah. this. Yeah. 
and not wait until you go to the full anxiety to get there. I think, I don't know, I, I would hope, I can't be the only person who's noticing these types of things. What's, I don't see anybody openly discussing much of what their personal routines have changed, like I, amidst the quarantine stuff. You know I, well, I see that as an intuition. Of... I, I see that on the protocol. Okay. Like no one is talking about no fix November. I know they yeah. all back on the stuff. And look at the rituals of the of the protocol. This is where I bet you a lot of people got the cows back in and all that stuff. Yeah, people don't mm -hmm. want to say, but because people don't want to say anything right now. The fear of being ostracized is real. Yeah, yeah. It's real, yeah. right? Uh, I'm at the stage where I don't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, but it's real. But again, we're here. We're not in France where it's full lockdown or stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like in France, I would have. I've got would, it really good here. Yeah. It's really it's, nice here. Uh, Holland, like it's not Sweden, but honestly, I'll take that anytime. It's, like in France, I would have. I think if I were in Paris right now, I would have. I would take it a lot different. I would not take it well. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I would be interested in hearing from any of you. Yeah. Like how, how this. Uh, story, or at least this, how Julian frames mm. this uh, yeah. this concept of boredom and the and the brain networks, uh, like how that translates to what your experience has been over the course of your life or these last few months, even uh, how it's changed. Because I think this living, the way we've had to do the last couple of months, has been a lot harder on people than people are willing to admit. Yes, I and I, yes, I think it's going to take a while before people acknowledge yeah. how how it is. Last point: authority over yourself involves action. Mm -hmm. Second rhythm. It's not how harshly you talk to yourself. No. We need to talk about this. Yes. Because I, I can see it coming, uh, especially from the women's side of things, where they're going to confuse authority and being mean to yourself. Mm -hmm. One has nothing to do with the other. On the contrary, it is not about talking to yourself in a mean way. It is not about talking to yourself. It's even though the third person is there. It's about making you do things. Yeah. Please understand the difference. It is not about words. It is about action. If we write about the boredom, the first sign of boredom with me, you need to take action. You're bored doing an email. Take a really cold shower. Are you still bored? No. Because mm -hmm. you change. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. it is about action, not about words. Talking to yourself harshly in a mean way is not what we're saying. Because we're going to see that. And I do think that when we talk with boredom, and while a lot of these things are going to be are situational, of course, no matter what state my but, life is in, but well, I, I want to, I want to, I, okay, I have a yeah. point I want to get. No yes. matter what state my life is in, how well I am at uh, dictating to myself what I do and, and being mm -hmm. principled and following my, my own, you know, a man on his horse with his own code, you know, that yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. right? If I'm that guy and I'm still sitting in the room and there's just a fucking piece of electric, a pin that's going to shock me, 15 minutes later, I'm going to, there's nothing else to do here. I, like, like, I still think that is right. still going but to be imagine, a thing. But that's situation. okay. Imagine if I go this and then I prick a different part of my finger every time, trying to learn the different sensation yeah. of my finger. I'm in a salience network. Yeah. What if I go, I keep pressing longer saying, let's see how long before this happened or that happened. What if I keep experimenting, deliberate mind wandering? Yeah. What if I think if I have a pleasant thought and I zap myself and it makes it go away? Can I keep a pleasant thought w while zapping myself? Mm -hmm. That's, we are, we are purely in a salience network. Mm -hmm. Remember the difference between spontaneous mind wandering yeah. and deliberate. Yeah. Right. There's all the difference in the world. Deliberate mind wandering is a salience network. Spontaneous mind wandering is a default mode network. It is not the same. Well, it, but so it, there's no issue with doing yeah. that. And in that, but in that state of isolation, right? That's like, that's like, that's like <laughs> maximum, maximum potential for boredom, right? Here, where they lock us, right, they yeah. lock me in this room. Everything's gone. But I do think that that's the extreme, <laughs> your extreme exposure that's, for it. Yeah. That actually, if if you have been taking action and and say the routines, yep. like the whole point of the routines and the action and the get yourself to do things is so that your life be better and that you're doing more and, and he things are right. headed yeah. the right direction. And I think that like doing those things will then limit the overall boredom. You may not, you may still find yourself bored, but you're not going to feel like you're I'll, in that. I'll actually lot. say more than that. Okay. Uh, my view is, is that the greater authority you have over yourself results in the more interest you have in the world. So let me explain. That means that if you are, you have true authority over yourself, you will zap yourself 200 times in 15 minutes, gaining knowledge out of every zap. That's what craftsmen do. Mm -hmm. So for example, what do I mean by that? Ramen heads, the, the stuff. 
the guy has that inside life that anybody else would find boring. He stands like whatever hours a day doing the same action, which is putting ramen noodle from here to there to there to there. It's basically being at the factory. Yeah. And yet, he's one of the truest craftsmen I've ever seen. He has a tremendous passion and he learns with every single dish. And who has more authority over himself than him? Yeah, so true. I would actually go way further than that. You're not going to skip boredom. You're going to find making emails interesting because the world became interesting because you have authority over yourself. The world is not non-interesting because of what you do. The world is non-interesting because of who you are. You're not bored. You are boring. So by having authority over yourself, you make the world a better place to be in. That's how far I would take it. My job. Nailed it. <laughs> Wait a minute. We cannot miss that exactly. on camera. I'm going to cut that. We're going to get yeah, that real exactly. tight in the first yeah. time. <laughs> That's how I look at yeah. it. That's craftsman for you. That makes sense. Jiro87 saying I learn from sushi every day. He's done the same stuff yeah. for 70 years in a row. If you look at it like that, how could that not be boring? People will complain about emails. Mm -hmm. like emails are boring. Depends what you get from it. Yeah. What if you become a master at emails? You'll get a promotion anyway. Yeah. So that is not true. It's not the action. It's who's doing the action. Well, I don't have anything worthwhile to follow that one up with. So we don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Everything's on the things. Support the podcast at podcast.strongfit.com. Uh, we should have all of the, uh, you can sign in, or what's the term? You can join the channel on YouTube now. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should we, be we adding that stuff. Yeah, this. Yeah. Actually, some of you are probably seeing this from behind the paywall thing. But but so what we've done, yeah, because we haven't announced this yet, have we? Not no. on the podcast? No. Okay, perfect. Maybe I can just cut this and this can be the announcement that we use for the thing too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fuck it. I don't yeah. know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we have a, uh, yeah. what we've done is YouTube, YouTube's given us this new feature we can do, which is, cool. which is we can start to add uh, paid content. Uh, we're going to offer it, we're going to keep it really, really simple in the beginning, but we're going to have it basically be just a subscription, $9.99 a month. You're going to get the podcast episodes as soon as I get them done and uploaded, which is usually going to be about a week. Five to ten days. Week or two, depending. Yeah, yeah, five to ten days. Uh, if Julian shuffles it around, you might be seeing some of the ones two, three weeks before yep. they come out. Um, but most likely, everything will be about a week or so on average. Uh, the podcast and the cooking show, you'll get early episodes there. Um, and then we do uh, the videos training. And then, well, that's the, so the base oh. level. Okay, with that, that yeah, that's, right, that's right, going right, to be right, the right. base. Early access. Yeah, we'll have to, yeah. And some uh, and we're, and, we're, and, and, we're, and some Q and A's. Yeah. Yep. Then the second one. There's going to be a second tier. It's like five bucks more. Includes all of that. And then we're going to do some uh, right. talk with Julian So what, what we'll do is uh, we'll have like only for the people on that channel. I'll film my training sessions that we'll upload. And then once a week or so one every two weeks, I'll do a video explaining the, the training. Yeah. Right. Or maybe like a, I can voice over or stuff like Any, that. Yep. My training explaining why I do what I do, why I fail. Uh, was I doing good? Was I doing bad? So explaining basically my training as I train. Maybe a voiceover would yeah. be cool. And then if we get more than, let's say, uh, 100 people on that channel, we'll do live Q&A or we'll do Q&As, live Q&As just for those people. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to throw this out there right now is if we get to over a thousand people subscribing on this, Julian and I haven't talked about this. I'm no. selling them out. Okay, kind of I to know have the capacity, I think, for us to actually do live podcast episodes. That'd be cool. And it's not something I want to have to set up for all the time, but I would like to really do some live Q&As that are for the people in that group and that also stay for the people in that group too. That yeah. That's not, some of these things, you know, the early access will kick that value out. So everyone's still getting all the stuff. I want some of these live Q&As that we do for the people behind this group to be to stay there. Just, to yeah, yeah, it'll be just for you. Uh, and one of the main reasons we're doing this is we talked about this is a relationship with you guys. Uh, 15 bucks is two trips to Starbucks. Yeah. Or an espresso in Venice. In Venice <laughs> Beach. Uh, maybe two espressos in Venice Beach. Uh, and stuff like that. But because we want to... I, I, me, what I would like to do eventually is to build that community big enough so I answer questions there. Because this has to be a two-way street. Yeah. I, I, I talked about this before, but like uh, on our side, like we do a lot of work, we put a lot of stuff for free, and sometimes 
like it's it's not money it's just like the work has to be shared i mean yeah and 15 bucks uh again like if you're not willing i i want the paywall because i want a step for people to sh that so they can show us that they want that stuff to move forward yeah. and so I'm, I'm i'm willing to do more work because i love this yeah. and filling my training session explaining it i just want it to be for people that earn it one way or another yeah it's hard sometimes giving a lot of that stuff away on instagram because i spend so much time fielding stuff that's not important for people who don't care right and that's the thing is <laughs> like, the, the work for, for people who don't care takes a piece of your soul away every time yeah it does. Yeah. Like, it makes us less willing to work. And so I, I don't want to get to a point where I burn out because I feel uh, for one person that cares, tens, hundreds don't. Yeah. And that, it hurts. Yeah. And I don't want to burn out because of that. So I want to create a behind the paywall so I can talk to the people on it directly, one-on-one, -on -one, feeling that we are part of a, of a tribe, mm -hmm. of a community where we all are working toward bettering people, yeah. mankind, kind yeah. of thing. So then it gives, that 15 bucks will give meaning to what we do. Not because of the money, but because you are taking a step toward creating a relationship. Yeah. And it matters. Otherwise, we'll burn, we'll, we'll burn out. Otherwise, we're arguing with people on Instagram that never gave a shit about anything we said anyways. And, and we're just there to start and shit. And it takes me two, three days to recover. Like that fucking guy on Instagram. I, it took me two, three days. <laughs> I didn't sleep that night. Yeah. I didn't sleep. I barely slept that night. And it took me two, three days to recover. And I'm still, like, I'm still angry about that fucking podcast with OPEX because they set me up and I did not defend myself correctly as I should have because when I was in the middle of it, I realized that this was an attack which I did my fault i did not see i knew it was a setup but i didn't see it coming for what it was and i'm still upset about it and it's yeah. been i don't know like two years now yeah those are lessons that learn slowly yeah. yes and 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 so and it hurts so what we have but we do have constraints here with strong fit that we want to make sure that we keep intact and that's what we want to make sure that everyone has access to the podcast so, yes so for those will never you, change yes. early access is what's what's behind there we're going to do some bonus stuff some behind the scenes stuff eventually yeah um but that's where we're going to start with early access on the first tier yeah. and some q and a's and then the second tier is going to be some practical application stuff and julian's training and a little more discussion and explaining kind of the whole and because i want to explain why the training and stuff like that yeah i just i could do it on the strong fit community but the, again like the like we do a lot of stuff for free. Like there has to be an exchange. Well, at some point too. So this is the truth: is I'm almost out of time bandwidth. Right, already. right. That too. When we get to like it, where Tyler is working a lot where, of hours. If, if we're being realistic, yeah. I'm editing. Yeah. Almost four hours of actual filmed podcast work a week, plus right. yeah, he has a to cooking get... show, one or two right. episodes a week. Yeah, so and he has to get stuff. so so no, there's a point you, you where need, you need to get paid for. Yeah, this. well, what, yeah. so what we want to be doing with this is make it so I can take the right amount of work out and, and, and put it here in a place where then if there is if we make some money off of this, we can start to grow more of those offerings without it just being having to pivot around the time that I have available. Yeah, no, plus you need to get paid for yeah. it. There's a moment so, where more work means more money. For like sure. it has yeah. to be. Like, come yeah. on. So. Yeah. YouTube.com forward slash strong fit. That's where it's all going to be. Uh, and, if you're you already have a button yeah, that says join, yeah. I haven't turned it on. Well, I, I did now. I haven't yeah. at the moment we're talking. But um, yeah, you'll push the little button up top. Uh, I think where you would normally hit subscribe, it's, you have two choices now subscribe and I think join channel or join now. Um, and in there, you can pick your options. And um, for those of you who are subscribers to the podcast, already on the podcast support page you'll get an email letting you know about how we'll recommend the transfer and all that other stuff so all that that stuff will be squared away pretty soon so but i'm really excited it's a good opportunity we went with youtube um really just yeah. because all the content that we were looking at putting out for it was just was going to be in video and, I, and it was going to be a bunch of anyway, work around yeah. and so this spot plus, i think is good and this is integrated it's seamless here's it's, the thing uh, yeah. i found a lot is that i don't want to use another app on my phone. Yes. I, not, not, not that yeah. new apps are bad or any new ones we've used are bad, but in I think the average person is at some sort of app saturation point right now. Yeah. Like, do you think oh, there's, another click? Do you think there's yeah. room for another social media platform right. on, yeah. in the world? Like, I another I, click, another two hours of your day, another yeah. yeah like yeah. we have too many clicks. That's why we're redoing the website too, the strong yeah. because there's too many clicks. Yeah. Like this has to be simpler, and yeah. uh, YouTube is great for that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, we'll have to keep most of our, our uh, Epstein and conspiracy talk off. Anything anti WHO has got to stay off YouTube, though. What? <laughs> What? We'll get into that off air. I'll go on Instagram, uh, Instagram <laughs> IGTV then. So, Fuck but that. Well, there we'll see. IGTV. Fortunately, they change what they say. WHO, Chinese pockets, IGTV. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, trying, to I'm, trying, I'm trying to make the Facebook I'm IGTV to China claims also. You're totally allowed to say that. Probably. It's fairly obvious. Come on. <laughs> So, but uh, strongfitlibrary.com, that's where we've got all of our articles stuff. We're constantly updating, curing it. Julian keeps bringing me back up to speed on shit I was missing, too. We keep going back to filling in some of the newer stuff where we're going yeah, we to have get to all see, that uh, stuff. What's left. So yeah. that's a, but that's an encyclopedia that's being constantly built. So check it out at strongfitlibrary.com. There also are podcast guides in there. If you want to search just for the term podcast guide there, you're going to see ones where we have specific clips cut out, one to three minutes, a subject, a title, so Julian defending it, it's perfect. Um, everything else, strongfitequipment.com for sandbags, apparel, strongfitequipment.eu for Europe. Uh, Manta Fitness sells all such all those such things in New Zealand and Australia. And we've got the functional integration training template. Uh, you can find that stuff all at strongfit.com. Julian's got his one-on-one -on -one coaching there as well. Yep. I believe that stuff is under the online classrooms tab. No idea. Uh, as we're rebuilding the website, I want yeah. to make sure it's all I there. swear it'll be easier. So, but the, we, we do have Julian's training template. Simple. We also have one-on-one -on -one nutrition and training coaching with Julian directly. And what else are we floating out there? That'll do it. Strongfit1 on Instagram. Ladies. And so on Instagram. Thank you, and we'll see you in a couple days.